We're going to talk about the power of the Word of God. You know, the Word of God. This book is a letter from God. And it has, you know, over the years it has uh, expanded. You know, it once was the Old Testament. Now it's the New Testament. And we have it combined. You know, this book is outlawed in, in several nations. Uh, my, my brother worked in Saudi Arabia. Now they would let him bring his Bible in, but no, oh, don't. Don't, don't proselyte. How many know there's a lot of Christians in Iran and Iraq? Hallelujah. And one of these days they're going to be free. Hallelujah. And they're going to, they're going to evangelize the world. Hallelujah. In Acts 10.38 it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. You know, that's a mission statement for us. We could say how God anointed Danny Moffat, Mark Ward, Joe Blaze, Kathy Moffat. You know, he has anointed you for service. And he's anointed you with the power of the Holy Spirit. And you're supposed to go around doing good and healing all that are oppressed by the devil. Well, I didn't know I was supposed to lay hands. Jesus said, we, you, as a believer, will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You know, it's not up to us to save anybody and it's not up for us to heal anybody. That's all on Jesus. So we deliver the Word. You know, I was in a place yesterday, I won't say where it was, but I delivered the Word and they, they looked like a, they, they were a cow at a new trough. They looked and a they, they, uh, they didn't understand. As far as I know, one lady says, I enjoyed your sermons. Well, I'm glad she received it. But you know, we gave Romans 10, 9, and 10 uh, to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. And uh, you know, Romans 10, 9, and 10 tells us how to be saved. If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, we're saved. That's simple. You know, anybody can do that. But a lot of people don't. You know, the world, people that you rub shoulders with every day, the world, by and large, is going to hell. That's just a simple fact. All of the world, people are going to hell. Now, we send missionaries to Africa and India and all over the world uh, to Proclaim the word of, uh, of truth. Amen. You know, Jesus was approximately 30 years old when he received the Holy Spirit. Now, from his birth until that time, he was a student of the word. How I many you know Jesus studied the word? And, uh, you know, he had the Old Testament and he studied the words of God. But, you know, when he was tempted by the Holy Spirit, now, after the Holy Spirit uh, came on him, and God said from heaven, this is my beloved son, and uh, the devil knew that's him. That's the one I've been waiting for since the garden. And so the devil attacked the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what? If he attacked Jesus, he'll attack you. Now, we're going to pray at the end of the service. Uh, we we uh, know we need to pray for the Lily family. And... Uh, others that need prayer. Well, let's go to prayer right now. Father, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your word, Lord God, that we can live by your word, Lord God. I know that sometimes we fall short, but thank, thank you, Lord, for putting 1 John 1, 9 in the Bible. Lord, that we can confess our sin and you forgive us of our sins and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, so Father, we thank you. We thank you for the salvation gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God, that our words will be mighty words today. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Jesus didn't do any mighty acts. You know, uh, he didn't make birds out of sand and let them fly away. He didn't do any mighty acts till he was anointed of the Holy Spirit. When he was anointed of the Holy Spirit, the the Bible says the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. You know, how many of you are tempted? I put both hands out. 
How many of you have sinned since you were saved? How many are glad in 1 John 1, 9 of the Bible? Amen. Yeah, you know, but Jesus never sinned. And he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness of temptation. You know, that was after he received the, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Two things that you need in this life. You need the Word. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimony. Well, what's the Word of our testimony? It is declaring what God has said in His Word. And we need the Holy Spirit. You know, Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. Jesus showed us the life. The life that we're to live. Uh, you know, somebody said, well, why, did, why did Jesus have, have to pray? Because Jesus said the Father is greater than I. He showed his love for the Father and he prayed. You know, uh, at, the, at the tomb of Lazarus, he said, Lord, I know you hear me always. But because of this, this group that's assembled here, I'm praying. And uh, so he prayed, and uh, you know, Lazarus came forth. Now, now, the Bible said he'd been dead for three days. And there was Martha or Mary one said, don't roll that stone away. Woo! He, he smells bad. bad. Years ago, I had a friend of mine that uh, he, he moved bodies from one place to the other. And so he, he didn't know that the Jews, they don't, they don't do like other people. They, 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 they don't put the embalming fluid. And so he was up north somewhere, and he got snowed in. And so he had to leave his airplane for three or four days. When he opened that door, whoo! He said, I took the seats out. I took all the, all the gar uh, cloth out. He said, I had to give that plane away because that stink. Well, that's what Martha was afraid. Oh, he, he, he's going to smell bad. Don't do that. But Jesus said, roll the stone away. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You know, we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us are going by the way of the grave. Some of us are going to be present when the Lord uh, sounds the trumpet and we're going, we're, we're going in the air. And either way, that's going to be experience for us. Amen. Now, the good news is when you leave this world by the way of death, you go into the presence of the Lord. That's good. And, but, you know, you're going to pick up your body. I don't know how God's going to do that, but he's going to do it. I believe the word. I believe that he's going to be the one. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, the temptation of Jesus, it was the Holy Spirit that brought to mind. Now, you, Jesus knew hundreds and hundreds of scripture. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone. Now, the devil tempted him. Well, if you're really the son of God, turn these stones to bread. Amen. And he could have done it. But he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, Jesus is our example. You know, you're supposed to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Ooh, that's a tall order. That's a tall order. How, how many of you know that's a, that's a hard task? Yeah. How, how many of you know that's an impossibility? Because yeah. there's only one person that did that. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm glad that he did because he included me. He, he included me in the, in the gift of salvation. Man shall live by the word of God. That's what Jesus was saying. Man will live by the word of God. And Jesus demonstrated the word every place he went. Uh, he, he raised people from the dead. He said, I'm the resurrection and the life. Now, I'm glad he was the resurrection and the life because if I go by the way of grave, I, I'm, I'm planning one of these days for the Lord to resurrect me. Amen. And you know, we, we don't know. When, when, when our appointment of death is. But, you know, God is a good God. And, uh, you know, he, he comforts us. He, he blesses us. You know, I was at, uh, at a, 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 a memorial yesterday, and, uh, you know, people there, they, they, they love their mother, and, you know, we, we, we miss, my wife says, you know, 
we, we shed tears because we miss the person. We miss their, their presence. You know, if the Lord was to appear here, how many would get healed? Oh, we all get healed. Man, absolutely, Lord. Well, you know, the Bible contains the word of God. Everything Jesus would say is in the word. He's not going to say anything different from the word. But, you know, the manifest presence of the Lord, well, the Lord could heal me. You know, there was a, it's an instance in the Bible that, that Jesus didn't, wasn't successful. And, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit assists us in our ministry. I want to get ahead. <clears throat> Jesus did no mighty works until he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Unbelief hindered the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was in his home, hometown of Nazareth. They, they, now here's what they said. Is this not the carpenter's son? You know, that's, that's uh, the, the King James Version. A carpenter is not what he was. He wasn't a nail bender. Uh, Joseph was a, a tech, technon. We get technology from. He was advanced. He had uh, knowledge of, and he knew how to do it. But he says, is this not to cover? It's not his mother called Mary. And his brethren, James, Joseph, Simeon, and Judas, and his sister, are, are they not all with us? Boy, they're building a, 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 a plank out there to step out in unbelief. And uh, their unbelief caused Jesus to be unfruitful. You know, if we don't believe that Jesus is who says he is, the, the word won't work for you. The Holy Spirit won't come and help you. Jesus said you will see power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses. They thought Jesus was a common man and they reasoned within themselves. You know, there, there's another example of them reasoning within themselves. And immediately, this is Mark uh, chapter 2, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason you these things in your heart? That's why he had to have the Holy Spirit. He couldn't look at people and see if they're unbelief, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy, Holy Spirit perceived that. You know, <coughs> Paul was in a certain place. And he perceived. Well, how do you know that man had faith to be healed? It was through the Holy Spirit. You know, we can, uh, we can make it through this life. We can <coughs> have the ups and downs of life. But we need the Holy Spirit. We need God's Spirit to rest upon us. Jesus said you will see power after the, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses. You know, our primary mission in life is to be a witness for the Lord. God has sent you wherever you are. You know, some of you work a job uh, and uh, you, you meet people all the time. And, and, and you're supposed to share your witness of Jesus. Now, everybody doesn't receive that witness, but that doesn't excuse you that you ought to Witness for the Lord. That's what God has done for me. And, uh, you know, we have the Teen Challenge men and women, and they testify what God's done in our life. And we applaud, oh, that's wonderful. You know what? We're called to do the same thing. Well, I don't have the testimony of that. You know, God has changed our life. And if we testify that God has changed our life, and He can change yours. Jesus said, you're meant to be a witness. So they reasoned within the self. How did Jesus know their thinking? Well, the Holy Spirit revealed it. Jesus, the Holy Spirit wants to assist us in our ministry. You know, the Holy Spirit will, will put you in contact with people that you're supposed to witness to. You know, and sometimes we don't. We, we, uh, we talk about the weather, we talk about sports, we talk about uh, everything but Jesus. And uh, I, I was at Sam's the other day having my hot dog. And uh, this guy came up to I graduated with you. Do you know who I am? 
Well, I said, no, I don't. And I apologized to him. Well, later, I said, no, I don't. He said, he, he, he was Doug Williams. He said, I'm Doug Williams. And uh, so I came over to his table. I said, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. You know, we change. How many of us change? You know? I, I was at service the other day, and uh, th- this girl, when we knew her, she was skinny. And she gained some weight. That's all I'm going to say about that. Hallelujah. And they went forth preaching everywhere. The Lord. Now, God through the Holy Spirit. God has sent the Holy Spirit into the world to assist us. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit will assist you in your witness? In the same way that he assisted Jesus. You know, Jesus knew hundreds and hundreds of scripture. You know, he could be like me. What's that scripture? I'm thinking of But the Holy Spirit put it in his heart. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And, and, and in every instance that the devil attempted, the Holy Spirit lifted up the word against him. And so Jesus simply said the word. You know, the word of God is, is a deterrent to the devil that we can defeat the devil with the word of God. But it takes the Holy Spirit in our life. Now when we get saved, you know, a lot of people say, well, we, we have all the Holy Spirit. No. We have a part of the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, you, you have the Holy Spirit. But, you know, uh, trying to operate on that, we, we can get left sometime. You know, uh, when I was a kid, I, I, I had a Mustang, but it was a six-cellar. And uh, my, my dad did that because of... of uh, the insurance. And so I had a six cylinder. I was the only guy in, in that had a Mustang with a six cylinder. Now I was glad to have a Mustang because I would have drove a tractor to school. And there were plenty of them. Uh, you know, I, I, I drove uh, uh, some, some time ago we were up in uh, 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 in Mountain View and uh, we went out and there was a a car. I said, I used to drive that thing to school. Oh, I said, that? Yeah. I was proud of it. Over in front of the store, uh, the uh, uh, store in uh, Jefferson, Texas, it is, a, is a, 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 a truck that I drove. Except mine had the fenders. They were cracked. And it was yellow. I called that thing old yellow. <laughs> But I was glad that I would have drove a tractor. You know, but I was proud of that. I said, Mo, I was so happy. I didn't care. It could have had a, a, a go-kart engine. In. I was happy to have a Mustang. Now, my, my dad bought that for me, uh, you know, back when I was uh, uh, graduating from high school. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't have, there were people that had road runners and, and uh, Chevelles and all that, but I was glad to have my little, little Mustang. Well, you know what? We're proud to have the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a, a, a separate work. You know, the, 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 uh, the, the disciples were saved because they believed that Jesus was alive. And, uh, but he said, don't leave Jerusalem until you be in duped with power from on high. And so they camped out in the upper room. We've been in that upper room, or they said it was. I don't know. Uh, they said, that's the upper room. And it was a grand place. But, you know, they, they, uh, they passed the time, and they, they thought, uh, you know, they uh, elected uh, somebody to take Judas's place, and they did everything they could think of to pass the time. But when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Acts 2 and 4. The Holy Spirit came in like a mighty rushing wind and rested upon every one of them. And they had cloven tongues of fire. Now you can see the difference between Peter. You know, Peter was outspoken. He he must have had uh, uh, peppermint uh, shoes because he was always sticking his foot in his mouth. But when he was empowered by the Holy Spirit, he became a bold minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. He went up to pray. He wasn't expecting the lame man, but he, he uh, as the lame man reached out, said, give me something. 
You know, there was beggars. But this lame man said, give me some. He said, well, I don't have my wallet with me. But such as I have, I have something. I will give it to you. I, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Woo. And he said, no. He, he went in the, in the temple, walking and leaping and praising. And they said, isn't that the guy that was sitting, wasn't even lame for birth? Yeah. He's walking and leaping. Because he had something. There was a difference in the ministry of, of Peter. You know, Peter wrote the book of First and Second Peter. You know, I found out yesterday, James is the oldest New Testament book. Well, it's way over in the Bible. How could that be? And uh, James, you know, was the, the, the brother of Jesus. He was a half-brother. Because Jesus, uh, you know, James and all his sisters, they, they had Joseph as their father. But Jesus had God as his father. Now Mary was his mother. She, she was conceived. We, we just went through the, the uh, Christmas story and we, we told all that. But Jesus, Jesus had his father, the Holy Spirit. The angel said, well, she said, how can this be? I don't I, I had not sex with a man. I, how, how can this be? The oh, Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And the glory of the Most High will be upon you. And that holy thing conceived in you. Well, how did God do it? Well, he conceived the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad he did? Woo! We'd be lost and undone. I wouldn't be preaching. I'd be robbing and stealing and I'll probably be in jail somewhere, sitting in. Contemplate my next crime. Yeah, but God saved me. Uh, you know, I thought about the, the devil. Does the devil ever remind you of a person you were before you met Jesus? Oh, yeah, he does. And he reminds me of what a jerk I was. And I tell you, you wouldn't have liked me back then. You wouldn't have liked me. You would have tolerated me, but you wouldn't have liked me. Because I, I was snarky, and I would say things, and, and I, you know, I did things, and I'm glad that's all under the blood of Jesus Christ. Because God saved me. He saved a wretch like me. You know, the purpose that we have in life is to be a witness for the Lord. When we leave this place today, our, our purpose is to witness for the Lord. And uh, we have the testimony of Jesus in our heart. Well, the Bible says they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Well, who confirmed the word in the life of Jesus? The Holy Spirit did. He had the word. He had, he had, he had all the knowledge of the word. You know, I, I listened to Rick Renner. And uh, he's an expert in the, in, the, in the Greek language. I mean, that guy amazes me. And he said, well, that's not interpreted the way it should be. And I'll listen to him, and, and uh, he's pretty amazing. But Jesus was uh, amazing too. He, he had the technical knowledge of the Word of God. But with all that knowledge, he didn't have any power to do anything. He couldn't heal anybody. Now, he would have wanted to, but God anointed him with the power of the Holy Spirit and he became a witness. And everywhere he went, he witnessed that he's the Messiah. Now you're not the Messiah, but thank God for the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. You know, in, in James, he says that, that, that God, he's talking about God and the Lord Jesus Christ. He talks about it in the first, first sentence. That he, he says, Jehovah God is the Lord. He's Jesus Christ, the Lord. He identified. Now, you know, there was a time that, that James was a totally against the ministry of Jesus. I mean, he, he, you know, he came with his mother and said, we, we need to get Jesus and talk to him because he's, he's went mad. But he is the Son of God. And, and everywhere he witnessed, he witnessed. The Bible says he healed all. 
it, you know, it healed everybody. Now, it doesn't go down the line and tell everybody's testimony, but he healed all. The Holy Spirit did that. You know, there was a time when, when the Holy Spirit gave the, the prophet a word. This lady came to her and said, my, 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 my husband was a servant of God and, and uh, he's left me with all these debts and he's dead and, and my, my son, they're going to take my son. I need my son. They're going to take him. And the Holy Spirit said, well, tell her, tell her to uh, get vessels not a few. And she said, well, I got a little oil. Well, pour it in. Well, you know, four ounces of oil, it ain't going very far. But the Holy Spirit anointed that oil. And she, she felt, now some of those water pots held six, uh, 50 or 60 gallons of water. And she's pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. And that was full. And she fills another. And after a while, every vessel was full. And, and the oil ceased. You know, God's a supply of every need. It, you don't have a need that God can't supply. You know, sometimes our, you know, we, we say, no, Lord, we need this by a certain day. But you know, don't set a day. Just say, Lord, you know what I need. I, I expect that I will have a need. You know what he'll say? Well, I want you to witness to that person. Well, my boy, hey, well, you, know, you want me to supply your need? Be a witness for me. Be a witness. Be a witness. Well, I have a lot more on this sheet of paper. You know, as a believer, Christ belongs to us. The Word belongs to us. The Holy Spirit belongs to us. The Apostle Paul, an apostle of Jesus by the will of God, to the saints which are efforts and to the faithful in Christ. Grace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You know, every good and every perfect gift comes from above. You know, we think about that. It comes from heaven. If it's good, God sends it. You know, we, we have a need and we ask the Lord to meet that need then, then God doesn't have, you know, dollar bills laying up in heaven. He doesn't have any yen laying in heaven, but he'll put it on the heart of somebody. You, you need to give so-and-so. And uh, how, many, how many of you are hard-headed? My wife tells me that all the time. My wife says, you're hard-headed, well, because I live with you. And she, but you know, God meets a lot of hard-headed people. God says, well, I want you to give so-and-so. Oh, that can't be the Lord. You know, I need that. I, I need this money. Uh, God said, I want you to give that money. I remember one time we were at a meeting years ago. And uh, my wife and I, I said, I took a $100 bill. How I had a 100 I don't know. Because we, we were living paycheck to paycheck. And I said, I want to give this an offer. She says, okay. And the Holy Spirit says, give it to the evangelist. Don't give it an offer. And I said, okay. I gave it to that evangelist. I put it in his hand. He looked at it. He said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said, they've taken my offerings. He said, they're probably going to give me enough gas money to get out of town. Well, they were stealing from God. God. God knew all about that. And God's put it on my heart to give. Now, he might have put it on other people. You know, I could have said, no, that's my hundred. I, I need that. My kids need shoes. And, and, and my, my, my girl needs a dress. And, and, and my wife, you know, I could have made an excuse. God would have met the need somehow. You know, God uses people. Amen. He uses people. Because we're all he has. You know, uh, I'll close with that. Brother Summerall, he's in heaven enjoying the blessings of the Lord, but he was over in the Philippines. 
and uh, he was building a B-29 hangar for a church. And uh, Gordon Lindsay, who's the voice of healing, was sending him a magazine. They said, got a truckload of those magazines. So he wrote Gordon Lindsay, don't send me any more magazines. He filled that thing as fast as he was putting it up. He, he, he was uh, filling up with magazines. And uh, one of the guys building said, uh, where's the church place for meetings? He didn't have a church. Just him and his wife. But you know, God is, God is a God, his wisdom and knowledge. He, he uh, I, I saw that film. Oral Roberts had a film on divine healing years ago. And he sent a projector and he sent the film. So he just stuck it in the word. He said, one of my, he wrote Oral Roberts, don't send me any more films. You know, God was working one, one morning. He heard, a, heard this gal was screaming. And his wife said, you know, that woman's demon possessed. Yeah, I know. Somebody ought to go and deliver. Well, you're all, like, you're, you're all the Lord's God. Oh, he got somebody. He said that he was getting in a cab to go over to, to the, 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 where the church was located. And the Lord said, Lester, I want you to go pray for that lady. He said, won't you use somebody else? He said, don't you have anybody else? He said, no, you're all I got. You know, sometimes it comes down to us. We're, we're the deciding factor. And we decide to side with God when it looks like an impossibility. And so he prayed all night. Next morning, you know, they, he went over and said, I want to pray for that lady. Well, they were ready. And uh, he said, no, I'm going to come over in the morning. We'll go. So he prayed all night. In the morning, he took a cab and he got over to build that person. And he said, they were walking with him. He said, when they rounded the curve, that lady had never met my mother. But she said, I was a little illegitimate child. And began to cuss and rant in perfect English. He looked around and said, well, there's nobody but me. But he said, the Lord said, I, I, I saw that thing. It looked like a monkey attached to her neck. I said, in the name of Jesus, get out of here. He said, that thing run up the wall and go out the window. You know, that lady couldn't speak a, a word of English. She couldn't hardly speak her own language. They were amazed. The next day, they, they said, well, Summer Hall has killed the devil. He said, well, I didn't, I, I, you know, while they write lies, but that's the power of the name of Jesus. But they said, do you want anything? He said, I want to be right across from the Capitol building. And uh, he had those magazines. And he'd give out magazines. And a, and a certain denomination didn't believe in any of that. Said, we can't have a meeting. Can you give us some of those magazines? He said, well, you don't believe in all that? He said, yeah, but we know that, but, but, but we need those magazines because we can't have a meeting without them. And God started a revival. You know, he emptied out that B-52, a P-29 hangar, and he had church because the church was, uh, God called the church, the church, called them out of every, every kindred tongue and nation. And, and he had the power of God. You know, the same words, if Jesus appeared to him, if Jesus appeared to us, he would say the same things that's written in the Bible. But you know, we, we, uh, we say, well, we believe the Bible. No, you don't. No, you don't. We don't believe what's in here because if we did, we, we would overcome. We, we would have victory over everything. But we don't believe the word of God. We, we uh, sympathize with him. You know, they're, they're, John Whistler came over. You can go out and get them. Uh, John Whistler came over and uh, on the way back, he, he didn't have a successful meeting. And on the way back, he, he met uh, some people on that boat. They were saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, he got filled with the Holy Ghost on those trip back to England. And he got up to preach his sermon and ran him out of church. So he crawled up on his father's tomb because he owned that and he said he preached the word. 
he came back. You know, John Wesley is the father of the message. He came back and preached Jesus Christ and him crucified and the message church was born. You know, there's a lot of denominations. If you, you look at their roots, they had a revival. The Baptists had a revival. The, the, the Methodists had a revival. The Presbyterian. All those churches had a revival. But they've walked away from the truth of God's word. You know, I'm a, I'm a similar God minister, but I tell you what, if they walk away from the word of God, adios amigos. Uh, there's a lot of denominations that believe the word of God. We need the word of God to, to keep us. Hallelujah. 